In order to fully experience God, you have to join Him in what He's already doing. You're about to see just how you can do that. I'm Raya Berryhill, and this is Mission Messiah. <laughs> Today's show, Lock and Shield, with Shane Kinney, First Priority Youth Movement, Tammy and Dana, and more. It's fixed upon him, we understand that he is worthy to be praised. Amen? Because he is awesome. He's, he made everything. He spoke that which was not as though it were, and it became. And He spoke you and me into the wombs of our mother with plans for us to have good success. Amen? And we became. And guess what? That's the path on which we now walk. The enemy worked to deceive us. The enemy worked to sideline us. The enemy worked to kill, steal, and destroy from us. But our King, our king relentlessly pursued each and every one of us and snatched us from the pit of hell and set our feet upon the rock of our salvation and his name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What else is there? Amen. He is our all in all. He's every, He's our very life. He's our very breath. Except He give you and me our next breath. We don't exist. He gives us our breath. Is He not worthy to be praised? No wonder He says if we don't praise Him, the stones will praise Him. Amen? But we choose to praise Him. Amen? We choose to enter His courts with thanksgiving. Amen. And dwell in the presence of the Lord all the days of our lives. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Woo! Yeah. Mr. Woo. Jerry, you want to close us in prayer? We read in God's Word where Jesus came to a woman at a well. And as he began to converse with this lady, he shared with her the sins of her life, the choices that she had made. But he told her this, he said, if you will drink of the water which I give, you will never thirst again. Won't you come and drink of the life-giving water that only flows from the throne of God. All right, so if they add some color up here and get rid of the gray, then that's what she's gonna do. She's gonna be beautiful. But you know, that would have been covered up by one of those big royal wedding hats. Well, <laughs> you're, you're exactly right, but I'm, I'm thinking that as an everyday do is a little much. <laughs> you're not gonna wear a hat? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I will if you will, every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got a couple of royal weddings coming up. It is amazing that our daughters got engaged the same week. The same week. And the week of the royal wedding. The week that of same the royal week. wedding. So all we're thinking about is these girls and weddings. These and girls and weddings. Two radically different personalities. They grew up together though. Now the fun thing is Linda just told me, who is our my stylist, she said that the royal wedding has been the talk at the salon all week long. So here we are. No doubt. And it was so much fun. Did you love the way that they lifted the name of Jesus? I did. I absolutely loved that. I don't, I'm not entirely sure all of the wedding guests loved that. You mean the faces that went like this? Yeah. <laughs> those, those faces who were not used to hearing Jesus in their preaching. I loved the moments between Harry and Meghan, you know. I mean, it is traditional in the royal wedding, in the, in the royal family, 
that you keep your back to the bride. You do not turn and watch the bride come down the aisle. The groom does not do that. William did not do that. But Harry turned and watched Meghan come toward him. Oh, that's and there were tears in his eyes. And when she was handed to him, he said, you look amazing. I've missed you. And I love this. He looked at his dad who walked her down the aisle and said, thank you, Pa. With oh, we're ready to call her. Goods. I got the good. She's got the Oh, and she's good at it too. So I'm going <laughs> to step away <laughs> and let, let the professional get... come in. Do you know what? I learned a fact um, the other day, Why? because I was wondering why the Queen chose the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Yes. As the name for Harry and Meghan. Yeah, they titles. are now the du the no, titles. Names, yes. It's their titles. Well, their titles. Duke the and Duchess of Sussex. You know. There has never been a Duchess of Sussex. Meghan is the first. Wow. And there's only been one Duke of Sussex before this. And this is how in depth they went in figuring out what title to give them. The Duke of Sussex was an abolitionist in England. He was key in abolishing slavery in England. Wow. Wow. So to wow, give, Linda, so to me chills. so to give them those titles is really a remarkable um, advance for the queen. I think you know, just a really well thoughtful, thoughtful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thoughtful. that queen did her research. She did that queen. I like that queen. <laughs> I like her clothes. She was lime green and Now, do you know why she dresses yeah, so brightly? I do know. Okay, she she dresses that brightly because she said people need to know they've seen the queen. No, you can't miss her. They said I need to be I need to be a uh, Right, so I can be seen. So I can be seen. Okay. So that people can say I saw the queen. Yes. And boy, she is bright. Yes. She is bright. I am having a hard time hearing because I have to take my glasses off. Yeah, she's not as good. She she can't <laughs> see, she why. can't hear the glasses. I can't, you know, I pull those glasses off and I can't hear anymore. I like what she said about how the preacher just really incorporated Jesus into... Which they're not used to hearing in the Church of England. They that. really are not. So and I think that was so important yeah. for everyone to hear in the world, you know. And, and I mean, especially at a time like this, and we need more unity and... You know, and, and I like how he emphasized, you know, that. And, and they had a gospel choir sing Stand By Me, and you know Stand By Me has got to be their song. You know what I yeah. love, though? Did you Isn't watch her? Fun? Did you watch her? I wanted to help her. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, she was like, I she was like, she, I love her hair. Her oh, hair. she looks great. Oh, my goodness. Her hair was Well, amazing. you'd see the hair. Yeah, you yeah. would notice the hair. How could you miss that hair? <laughs> you know, all of this talk about royalty, though, it, it makes me think about... Jesus and of us being the daughters of the Most High God, we are. He's the King of the. He's the King of the Universe. He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So if that's who we are, He is. Then the Scripture, Dana, and, and you read it because I can't. No, it's and it, it and I, made me take my. And what I love long. about this Scripture is that it makes us realize that we are also royalty. That's right. We are also royalty. Um, but you are a chosen. This is. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness and into His wonderful light. Do y'all love that? Oh, we are I royalty. Those of us who believe, who are in Christ, are royalty. We're royalty. We don't even have to wear the big hats. I, right. Right. Oh my gosh, that gave me goosebumps. And you know what? There is a royal wedding coming. We're awaiting our King of Kings and Prince of Peace, mighty God. He will return to the earth and us as the Bride of Christ, we will attend and be a part of a royal wedding. Mm. I can't wait. I can't wait either. I'm neither. I can't wait to see my groom. Yeah. Now you've been here We've been here five, five years. Yep, this will be, uh, yep, it'll be five years in, in okay. June. So, what have you seen in five years? It's been incredible. We have, um, with what we've done with pouring into youth pastors and local churches, because First Priority doesn't exist without the local church. I mean, we can do student ministry anywhere, but without uniting the body of Christ, you have to. And so what we've seen is we've seen a lot more unity come within the churches, uh, in Odessa specifically. We've only had two youth pastors over the course of our five years that have taken other jobs or left. The rest of them, they're just they're they're here unified. Side. And I think that there's unity in community. And uh, when you start pouring into them and, re and they realize that 
Man, I'm not here, out here on my own. I mean, there are other people that we need the same way. We need each other's arms. Iron right? sharpens iron. I mean, so we are for that. So uh, Natalie and I, we are kind of pastors to, uh, to our youth pastors, and, and we pour in and mentor to them as they pour in and mentor to us. So my, my goal for students really, it really hasn't changed because my heart is for students, but now it's more about pouring into people who are pouring into students so now we invest in their lives yeah and it and it, it means a lot to multiply yeah multiply yeah, we're not about down. the addition we're about multiplication yeah, absolutely it is great it has been great we've seen a lot of unity we've seen it grow from uh two campuses when we got here okay uh, we and were you started with what two campuses two campuses permian high school and bonham junior high school okay and uh we are now on 27 getting ready to be on 35 yeah we and, and is that middle school and high school? Middle school and high school, public schools. Okay. Uh, sometimes we'll get some charter schools or even um, we've been at Midland Christian School. And okay. um, There was a young lady, she was a freshman at Midland, freshman, she was at Midland Christian School. And somebody had asked her, why would you why would you have a first priority club? And this was at a fundraising banquet a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And somebody asked this young lady and she said, why would you have a Christian club at a Christian school? And she held up 19 cards of her friends that had given their life to Christ at a Christian school. But that's why. i got 19 reasons why we do a Christian club at a there Christian school. I think one of the best things that people can do is talk about it. Uh, talk about, you know, not just first priority, but the, the idea of, um, of being a part of something that's going to pour into students. Here's what we find out. We have a lot of those students that are growing up in broken families and broken homes. Uh, they take a lot of that guilt on themselves as if that was the, the devil's, know, their fault. The devil's work. It is. And so when they see us, it's, it's a little shocking to them uh, to know that there's somebody else that's pouring into them. Or for us to stand on the sidelines and say, we're for you. You know, we, we understand that you're not responsible for your past. But, man, we're here to help secure your future. We're here to, to, to encourage you as coaches, even on a football team. Uh, football team wouldn't be very good if there wasn't people on the sidelines encouraging them and nudging them and say, I believe in you. Uh, I, I trust, man. Let's tr trust and pray and, and let's work together. And so that's all we are as coaches. And so we had one young lady the very first year uh, at Odessa High School. And she turned around and she looked up and she said, why would you pour into us? Why do you, why do you love us so much and you don't even know us? Exactly. Well, it's because we have a love from God that we never had before. And so we want them to experience that exactly. same kind of love. And so what it does is that we're not just... It's not just about a club. That's just a, that's a byproduct. Exactly. But what we're doing is producing leaders. We're giving people hope, and that hope they take back to their family. There was a, there was a girl named Rebecca, and I shared the gospel with uh, with their class using an Evangel cube, about a 16 inch Evangel cube, and uh, and she was she was my holder. She held it. She would uh, open it up and show it. She remembered the whole story, went back and told her father the story of Jesus through this cube that she had seen, and her family got plugged back into a church because they had never been to church. But her, she took the gospel message back home to her family from just a cube. So we've uh, we've actually expanded to over six cities. Uh, we started in Odessa, and now we're you're mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And yeah, what so six cities? We're in Odessa and Midland, obviously, okay. and then uh, Monahan's Greenwood. Andrews and now Big Spring, which is getting ready to expand into Forson and uh, Cahoma and Stanton. So it's going to be 10 cities by the fall. Wow. So it's just growing, growing like crazy. We just had our fundraising banquet and we celebrated 1,105 decisions, 1,105 decisions on the school campus. Now, yes. Here's, here's a win for us. Okay. I love, I love talking about decisions. Out of 1,105 decisions, 1,104 of those were students. Are you serious? Okay, so here's the other one. We had a, a faculty sponsor, a Christian teacher, that invited one of their friends from their from their school, another teacher, to come and hear a student share the gospel message in the first priority Christian club, and the teacher gave his life to Christ and filled out a filled out a response card, and our staff got to follow up with this teacher and, and talk to him Golly. about the next steps and following Christ. Amen. Carry the gospel to all the world. Yep. Amen. I wouldn't do it any other way. Yeah. It is a beautiful day. You just saw the name of that candle, It's a Beautiful Day, and it is a beautiful day because I have with me today Melissa. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and Melissa uh, has been at Mission Messiah now for how many months? Almost buddy? seven months. Almost seven months. So the last month you've been spending more time at WOW. Yes, right? full time. <laughs> doing work training and 
and kind of learning some new skills. And I understand that we're in your department today. Yes, this is um, my department. So I spend a lot of my time, <laughs> but I love it. So I get to smell all the, all the good fragrances. So There are some good ones. And I hear we have a new line, Echo. In fact, let me just say this. WOW probably has the most complete selection of candles of any store in, in probably uh, from Dallas to El Paso, just to be perfectly honest. And so we have, we have over the years, the last 12 years, we have sought out the very top candle lines uh, at all of the markets that we attend, whether it be Atlanta or Dallas or Vegas or wherever it is. And so, Melissa, those candles we find in those markets are in your department. Yes, we sell a lot of candles um, from, I gift wrapped them or they just want their house to smell good. But yeah, candles is one thing we sell a lot of. So what's this new line? What, what's um, It's called Echo. Um, I've smelled all of them, but... Um, What's this one? That one is Ooh. the Just Breathe. Just Breathe. And it's sea salt. And it smells really, really good. It's really fresh. It's a sea salt. It, it does. It's, it's very, so, so it's fresh. It's kind of like the ocean. Yeah. Very <laughs> fresh. Very fresh. What? Uh, let's pick one more of those. Beautiful day. That one's Beautiful Day. Lavender Day Provence. Provence. <laughs> yes. Oh, ho, ho. Okay, well let's let's move on down and show some more candles. So what's our next okay. candle line? Well, here let's don't pass the soap rocks. Okay, so these are my favorite. These are soap rocks, and I had never tried them till the other day. Um, I was told that I had to try them. They are amazing. And, and let me put some light. Hold it up and let the light come behind it. So if these you can. actually look like stones. Um, real rocks and stuff. They're pretty to just decorate or to use. They, you know, I mean, they are nice. My one skin thing, feels smooth. It does. <laughs> one of the things that uh, a lot of people don't know, and uh, you probably do, but it's actually a geologist that uh, developed this soap. So it looks honestly like gorgeous rock. Uh, and that's why you can see if you put the light through it, they are magnificent. And I'll, I'll tell you this, I keep one in my shower, and it is a wonderful soap as well. So this is a good, good gift. It's a great gift. Okay, what's next? Okay, here's some more candles that are the same as Echo. Uh-huh. Um, this one is Light Up the Sky. Light Up the Sky. What, what's the scent? It is, I can't see it. Okay, <laughs> okay. We'll move right along. One thing while we're here, and I know time's a little bit limited, this Swan Creek line is fantastic as well. And it's a, what's special about it? Can you it's tell? a soy candle. It's a soy candle. So yes. what's, what's good about soy? Um, they burn longer. Yes, they uh, smell good. The, but the their fragrance is incredible. In yes. fact, I love it when, when we get our shipment of these in and you can walk in the, in the warehouse. Oh, and it all smells. <laughs> yes. It all smells. It all smells like these candles, which is amazing. Yes, they smell really good. Really They're so good. Okay. Uh, and the and, casing is nice too. Oh yeah. It. Yeah, because most of these uh, is put in pottery, so you have you have a little pot yes. uh, afterwards. Yes. Uh, and, and there's wonderful soaps and things that wow, but how about the volcano? Okay, volcano is one of our number one candles. People love the smell and they just love the candles. They burn for a long time. Can you pull one down and yeah. we'll just um, we'll smell it today. So we have them in different colors. They smell amazing. Mm. They smell good. <laughs> they are really good. And people just love them. They just, they're good gifts. So that's the same scent of Volcano. Well, there's we Paris have, over here. Um, we have Paris, we have Rain, we have Blue Orc, uh, is it Blue Orchid? Um, we have Blue Jean. So we have different ones, but volcanoes are number one. Number one seller. Yes, and we also wow. have it in the lotions and the room sprays as awesome. well. Awesome. Okay, so what's what's this candle? Um, these are wood wick candles. So the the wick is wood, and they crackles like a fire, like a fireplace. Okay. Has a <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and they smell good. I don't good. do it very good, but yeah. Cool. And the scents again are fan. very aromatic. So we have quite a bit of those. We have them lavender and one that's a beach that smells really good as well too. I mean, and then uh, how about your candle cafe candles? Uh, so these ones, you I love them. Want to show those? Um, so we have all different kinds. They're um, alphabetical order. I put them in order. Um, I restock them every day because we sell a lot of them. 
Um, one of our hot sellers is Butt Naked. We can't keep it on the shelf. It's I'm, what? It's called Butt Naked. I know this. But That's a name, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's the name. But people love it. It's really fresh. Oh. It's fruity. Um, so fresh we, and fruity. We sell a lot of this. We can't usually keep it on the shelf. Um, also, another hot seller is the Blue Suede. Um, I kind of know them all by name, so people are like, how do you know these? Because I smell them every day. <laughs> they smell really good. They last 60 It smells, eight. I'm telling you, Brand. I wish you could smell it. It smells just like suede. Well, here, here oh, we yeah, go, here yeah. we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Is that good or oh, what? Wow. You know, one more that they do that I love is leather and lace. Do you have one? We'll let Brant smell that if we can. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, it's oh. like you're stepping into a, a new car, okay? I mean. Wow. Is that fantastic? Wow. Yeah. And they last 60 to 80 hours. Yeah. So they Very last a long, long time. Very long lasting. In fact, we, all of our candle lines have a long burn time. They really do. Yeah. So what would you what would you tell everybody? Um, come check out our candles um, for a gift or just for a home home yeah. decor. Well, and, and one more question before we go. What have, what have you learned at the mission? What's the mission been for you? A way of life, um, a purpose, like just even wow too is part of Mission Messiah and it is wow. When I when people come in and they say wow, it makes me feel good because it's like I'm re like visiting the store for the first time when I see their faces and they're brighting up and stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of cool to experience that with them. So. Well, let me tell you, your pretty face and pretty smile would help make it all wow, okay? <laughs>Okay, we have some questions that have come in, and I really think that maybe these were inspired by our Mother's Day Miss Messiah television show where Rinda uh, did a really awesome uh, clip, I thought. Did, uh, did you enjoy doing that? I did. We had you fun. Really, you really yeah. did. But I, I think that obviously we have some questions in today that are relative to kids. This first one is in from Marilyn. Uh, over in Frisco and she's asking what do you do when your three-year-old will not mind you that's hard go mom that's hard. <laughs> um, my first question if I got to sit down with Marilyn personally um, is to ask her how much time are you spending with your three-year-old is mm -hmm. your three-year-old actually talking back to you because what they really want is to spend more time with you. Um, wow, did you hear that? Please, please listen, moms. And, you know, do they see you on your phone more than they see your face? Do they wow. hear you talking to them? And the second thing is, are you talking to them and not at them? Mm -hmm. I would make really- So, can elaborate for us a little bit, to them or at them? Uh, the difference between a shotgun and a rifle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And communicating. Okay. Um, speaking directly to them on their level, you know, and actually maybe getting Get down, down on their uh -huh. level. Okay. Not getting down to their level necessarily in communication, but on literally. Uh, on literally their on the physical. On their physical plane. level yeah. and make sure. So you're not towering like so. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And, um, and, and what are you trying to establish right there? I remember something we always did with our kids. Eye contact. Good eye contact. Yeah. You have to have eye contact. Yeah. And then the next thing I think I would maybe try to encourage her is that we talk about um, when you and I are doing uh, parenting classes that that's not original to me. It, you know, I learned it from a mentor and that is the, the main 16 minutes of the day. And that's those first, really good. those first four minutes when you engage when they wake up. Um, the four minutes before one or the other goes out the door. Uh, the, first, the next four minutes as they come in the door or you um, greet them. Yeah, like coming in from school or, right. yeah. And then um, the last four minutes before they go to bed. And um, I think the closer the contact at bedtime. The better the greater the impact at, at any of those 16 minutes well, but you, know well, you the, want them you want them sleeping on those last few minutes that absolutely. they had with you and, and honestly one of the things that we endeavored to do was take that last four minutes to help direct their little minds to the Lord and the things of the Lord and the security that we have in the Lord after 
we heard what was on their heart. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so for I think sure. that's very important at bedtime to make sure that you hear about their day and what's on their heart. And once again, um, listening to their heart and not just talking. Well, and I really do. Renda said something a moment ago as far as uh, parent, are you on your phone instead of with your child? And I, I heard about a survey just this week that, that, hurt, that honestly hurt my heart. And these were little uh, four or five year old children in pre-K and kindergarten. And they were asked the question, if there was an invention you wish had never been invented, what would that be? And would you believe that 25% of those children said the telephone and they were asked why and they said because my mommy and daddy are always on the phone yeah kind of hits I hope that hits all of our hearts I think sometimes we need to think back on when we got cell phones and what we do now compared to what we did then and well, television was bad enough. There was an era when everybody was glued to the television, and many still are. But that, fact, is, that is the television But it's now. the same thing. Yeah, it's it's today's television. television. Yeah. And so, but it, because it's a personal television, you can carry it in your pocket or in your purse. It's with you all the time, and every spare minute, if you're not careful, this is what you're glue, glued to, and you're wanting uh, the babies to be quiet because you are listening or watching something. So anyway, the Lord bless you. And uh, we'll be praying for that three-year-old. Amen. Brent, I want to introduce you in this mission moment to one of our sweetest ladies that's just arrived at WOW this week to start kind of the work training period half day. Yes. So uh, what's your first week been like, Miss Elizabeth? It's great. It's really great. I really? love working here at the store. What, uh, what have you kind of been doing this first week? Um, cleaning. Just cleaning iron. Cleaning. Yes. Yeah. Polishing. Doing bathrooms. Yeah. yeah. Well, you already had a little cleaning in your blood and heart, though, yes. didn't you? Yes, I yeah. love cleaning. She yeah. loves cleaning. So if you think we weren't excited to add Elizabeth to uh, the group that was training down at WOW, you, you missed it because we're really grateful. In fact, she is actually detailing out this little uh, landscape piece that we have right now. Just, you know, it's just kind of a decor piece to show this cool looking tree bench right here at WOW. But, uh, how long have you actually been at the mission now? It's three months. Three yeah. months. So I'm in my bronze phase. I just okay. actually started my new book. Okay. So. Uh, now, um, you had not completed when we did the awards no, a couple weeks ago. but we just barely completed. But, but the next time, you'll be up yes. to start receiving those awards as yes. well. Yeah. So what are you? Uh, what's kind of going on with your family right now? Oh, Is there man, some I'm so excited. Yes, tomorrow we're going to be picking up my daughters, and I'm going to have them for a week. So I'm really excited yes. about that. <laughs> yes. And so where, where will we be taking you for that? In Plainview. We're going to go get them. Going Plainview. up to Plainview. Yep. So, I'm and we'll excited. get, yeah. And they'll be with you for a week. For a whole week. And y'all yeah. will get to love on each oh, other yeah. and hug and all that good yes. stuff. Thank you so much, Mr. Jamie. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, we're excited for you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you.